what we'd want to do in this video then is deal with two more valid forms. Disjunctive syllogism and hypothetical syllogism. And that'll bring our total of valid forms, named forms, to four. We have modus ponens and modus tollens that I dealt with up here. And uh, our total of named invalid forms, that is affirming the consequent or denying the antecedent that we dealt with in the last video to two. So let's just talk through these. We can see, here I have examples of disjunctive syllogism and hypothetical syllogism. So if you read through disjunctive syllogism example here, I've got for the first premise, either we stop releasing greenhouse gases or we will face an ap apocalyptic nightmare in which roving bands of zombies search for brains. Premise two, we won't stop releasing greenhouse gases. Conclusion, we will face an apocalyptic nightmare in which roving bands of zombies search for brains. So again, P1 is ridiculous, but that's not the question. The question isn't whether P1 or P2 is true. The question is, if P1 and P2 are both true, does the conclusion have to follow? And it does, this is a valid form, but let's think through why. What this is effectively saying is, look, P1 is saying one of these two things, at least one of these two things has to be true right? One or the other of these at least has to be true. Either we stop doing this or this is going to happen. What that means is, so a disjunction, that's this, an either or statement, asserts that at least one of the things has to be true. So we have this form that just says, you know, S or Z, right? Where S equals we stop releasing gases z sweet face a zombie apocalypse shorts so premise one simply asserts look it one or the other of these if not both have to be true, um, P2 is saying, well, look, we're not going to stop, so not S, and therefore conclusion is Z. This is a valid form because this says at least one of these is true, and we know one of them is not true. That's what P2 asserts. So the other one has to be true. That's why it's valid. In hypothetical syllogism, we again have conditionals. Here's a standard example. Uh, if a student studies hard, then they will pass the exam. If a student passes the exam, then they will graduate. Therefore, if a student studies hard, then they will graduate. You can see that we might have reason to disbelieve P1 or P2, right? Of course, there can be exceptions. But the point is, again, that if we assume P1 is true, that is that every single time a student studies hard, they pass the exam. And also if we assume P2, if a student passes the exam, then they will graduate, then the conclusion has to follow. The conditional itself doesn't allow for any leakage of truth, so to speak. P1 or P2 might be true or false, but that's not what we're asking. We're asking, assume these are true, does that mean that this has to be true? It does. It's a valid form. It says the student studies hard, then they'll pass. If they pass, then they'll graduate. So they study hard, they'll graduate. Valid, right? Again, S stands for a student studies hard. P stands for they will pass the exam. And G stands for they will graduate. So again, what we have is you have to understand what a conditional means to understand why this is valid. Again, a conditional asserts that if this is the case, then this has to be the case. And it 
and that's happening twice over, which means that we can conclude this final conditional that if the student studies hard, then they will graduate. 